I'm Mark Tashinsky. This is my colleague, Paul Liu. Uh, we're from the Department of Neurosciences at the University of California, San Diego, and the Veterans Administration Medical Center in La Jolla. And today, we'd like to tell you about some of our work with induced pluripotent stem cells driven toward neural stem cells in models of spinal cord injury. And in a nutshell, the story that we'll tell you is that these cells derived from humans and implanted into the immunodeficient rat spinal cord with an injury extend very high numbers of axons over virtually the entire length of the rodent central nervous system, even after a spinal cord injury. It is this biology that we have begun to exploit in the last few years following the suggestion of Paul Liu and have extended now to human iPSCs in models of spinal cord injury. And Paul will begin by telling you about some of the methods that we have used in this study. So we started with fibroblasts that from our 86 years old male donor and was transduced with Yamanaka factors and to become iPS cell and then drive to newer stem cell fit. The cell was expanded and transduced with GFP for in vivo detection. And we graft cell to a C5 ham section lesion cavity with a fibrin and a growth factor cocktail to support them to survive. Two to three months later, the graft survived and filled most of the lesion cavity. The majority of cells become neuron, and, and some cells become glial too. So because the grafted cells were labeled with GFP, we could unequivocally track the emergence of axons from these cell grafts. And indeed, very large numbers of human axons extended from the lesion site rostrally and caudally through white matter and traveled exceptionally long distances. We quantified at least 20,000 axons emerging per side of the spinal cord from the graft in the lesion site. The axons traveled in linear arrays through the adult lesioned white matter, frequently diving off to penetrate the gray matter of the spinal cord. The axons grew for very long distances. From the C5 lesion site, axons were densely present at the lower cervical spinal cord, mid-thoracic, and into the lumbar spinal cord as well. In the rostral direction, axons traveled in high numbers into the medulla, through the midbrain, and were even occasionally present in the cortex and as far rostrally as the olfactory bulb. So in essence, these human axons traveled virtually the entire length of the rodent nervous system. At the ultrastructural level, we could see human axons in contact with the myelin sheaths of host rodent axons caudal to the injury site. And these human axons formed synaptic structures at the ultrastructural level as well. These terminals expressed excitatory and inhibitory axonal markers. We quantified the total number of human synapses, three spinal segments below the lesion site, and found that they constituted 9% of all synapses present in that region. In turn, host axons also penetrated the human graft, and both serotonergic and reticulospinal motor axons penetrated grafts. This established a mechanism whereby functional recovery could hypothetically be encountered, but in fact, when quantified, we didn't see functional recovery. The functional tests uh, explored the function of the lesioned right forelimb, and on all tasks, there were no differences from controls. However, the grafts themselves, while they filled the lesion cavity, in many instances had rifts traveling down the center that contained collagen that actively segregated the graft into rostral and caudal compartments, and the lack of functional recovery may have been due to this. And in ongoing experiments, we are attempting to address this issue and uh, continue experiments. So in summary, the findings of this experiment reveal what in our experience is the greatest growth of axons yet identified through the adult lesioned CNS. Human axons extended for distances of nine centimeters through the adult rodent spinal cord, a distance of 26 spinal segments, and very large numbers of axons emerged from the injury site. Notably, the age of the donor iPSCs did not appear to be a limiting factor in the growth potential of axons emerging from the implant site. Collectively, these findings support the story that intrinsic neuronal mechanisms are sufficient to drive very extensive axon growth through the inhibitory milieu of the injured adult central nervous system. While many experimental efforts have attempted to 
uh, overcome the inhibitory nature of the CNS, a cell in the proper growth state can still extend axons even through this inhibitory milieu. But many questions remain. Among these is how do we direct the growth of these emerging axons into appropriate targets? Can this, for example, be shaped by rehabilitation? Are synapses stabilized over time? Is there developmental pruning? Do these human cells develop over a human developmental time frame as opposed to a rodent time frame? And would, therefore, should this ever be translated into human clinical trials, require prolonged observation periods to observe clinical effects? This and many other questions remain to be uh, addressed. But the intrinsic biology of the growth provides fertile substrate for encouraging studies to look further into the biology of these cells.